morning and welcome to our service, wherever you are. We're all joining together in prayer and worship from our homes. Thank you to everyone who's contributing to our service this morning through readings and music. If you would like to contribute a reading, a prayer or some music to a future recorded service, please get in touch with Anako. We'll be looking for quite a few readers for both Palm Sunday next week and for the Holy Week services. If you would like a phone chat at any point, please get in touch with Anako. And for practical support, please use the channels that have been set up through the community councils in each of the villages. The AGM for Humby Church had been planned for today, but in order for us to hold it remotely and for you to be able to participate, we need a few more days to set up the arrangements. If you would like to receive a copy of the report and accounts for 2019, please email Liz or Margot. You can then send any questions and comments that you might have to one of us by next Wednesday, 1st April, please. When we're recording our report, we'll attempt to respond to everything that has been sent to us. This is a slightly unorthodox way to hold an AGM, but Oscar has granted some leeway in light of the circumstances. And the report and accounts have already been approved by the Kirk session at its meeting in February, so we now simply need to present those to the congregation. Following the government's regulations, all planned meetings and events have been cancelled or postponed until the situation improves. Thank you. That's all the intonations. Good morning. This is a bit of an unusual way to connect this morning, rather than seeing you all in church. But I'm nevertheless glad that in the circumstances we can connect in this way and join together from our house to yours this morning in worship. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us all. Let us worship God. Our first hymn this morning is hymn number 755. Be still and know that I am God. You can find the words for this hymn in a link above the video screen on the website. If you are using a hymn book, it is number 755. Be still and know that I am God. Let us pray. Eternal God, we come before you in a different way today, gathering despite being dispersed, each one from their home, and yet we are joined together in prayer. Help us to open our hearts and our minds to you now, so that we may find ourselves in your presence, entering holy ground from wherever we are. 
We each bring our own worries and concerns this morning, fears for the world and its people, anxiety about being isolated, about what is to come, about what the current situation will mean for our future. We also bring our hopes and our gratefulness for all the good we have experienced. Today our readings will speak of the life you give, the life you offer us. Help us, we pray, to accept this gift of life from you and to honor it by living fully, by living as the person you know we can be, by offering our whole selves to you. Help us to appreciate the life around us, the care and kindness we see, the shared joys, the shared sense of wonder at your creation finding new life in this season of spring. The newborn lambs in the field jumping for joy, the beauty of daffodils and tulips in our gardens, the birdsong all around us. In this time of worry, about how to keep ourselves well and safe, this time of caring for those who are ill, this time of insecurity. We pray that you may walk with us and lead us safely once more out of the darkness of fear into the light of your eternal love. As we pray together in the words Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now we are going to hear our readings for today, read by Paul Sales in Bolton. I have two passages from Scripture to read for today. The first is from Paul's letter to the Romans, and it comes from chapter 8, and it's verses 6 to 11. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead, because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also, through his spirit that dwells in you. And the second passage comes from the Gospel according to John, and it's chapter 11. And I'm going to read the first 45 verses, and it's the passage which includes Lazarus' death and raising and a visit to Bethany. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sister sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. 
Then after this he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were now trying to stone you, and you are going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he's fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought he was merely referring to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house consoling her saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you had believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upwards and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I know that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him, and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary, and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. Amen. And may God bless these readings of a word to us all. In the name of
of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We've probably all had some changes to our normal routine over this past week or two. Some of us are self-isolating, many of us are working from home, and we can't just pop over to the neighbours for a cup of tea. We can't go to the usual gatherings as we would normally do. For us in the months, we have been juggling with David and I both working from home, on the phone and in video meetings, while also trying to entertain Finn. One day this week, Finn had a little look around the study and then came running out, brandishing this beautiful Celtic cross that you can see here right behind me. It usually is on one of my bookshelves. As he came running out, he cried, Look, Mama! Look! A church! I said that it was actually a cross, but he insisted that no, it was a church. He saw this symbol of our faith, a symbol displayed in carvings and pictures in our church buildings, and for him it did what a symbol is meant to do. It carried meaning of something else, of this place and this community that is our church. It is very sad that we can't physically all gather this morning in one of our beautiful church buildings, but that doesn't mean that there isn't a church for us today. This, here and now, is our church today. A gathering in a different way. A joining together in a way that's different from our usual way of meeting and praying and worshipping together. A new way, but nonetheless a way of coming together before God. Our Lent journey continues, even though we are not sitting in a pew this morning. This is the fifth Sunday of Lent, less than two weeks to go, before Monday Thursday, before Good Friday. This time of Lent, where we are invited to examine our lives, to look at and question what is good and what we would rather like to change, this journey continues. It is an inner journey anyway. So perhaps this time of being confined to our homes, of looking more inwards, offers us a greater opportunity to do just that than any other time we have experienced before. Of course, what we see in the world is hugely worrying. Many of us will feel insecure and fearful. We live in unprecedented times with new rules and new regulations and disturbing pictures in the papers and on the news. Yes, it is an anxious time, but it also offers us a time for reflection. This time of isolation shows us what we value in our lives, the things still available to us and also those that we are missing at this time. It also can show us what we can do without and may not even miss. Life is perhaps a bit simpler just now. Less traveling, less commuting, less interaction, less shopping. And which of these do we actually really miss? This situation also shows us something different, something we might not always see and not always value. The care we have for each other in our communities. We see an enormous amount of support and care extended to one another. Phone calls with family, shopping for neighbors, people simply reaching out to one another in ways that are perhaps not always possible in our busy, frantic world. Perhaps we had long intended to offer support to our neighbors. Perhaps we had long wanted to volunteer, but have never quite found the right time or the right opportunity. Well now, the opportunity presents itself to us. In amidst the huge worry and anxiety around this illness that is coming to all of us, we can stand together also in our concern for each other, and perhaps even offer a smile or a wave from one window to another, 
or call up someone to whom we have not spoken in too long a time. My friend, the very wise Peter Miller, shared these words this week. They say that in Wuhan, after so many years of noise, you can now hear again the song of birds. They say that just after a few weeks of quiet, the sky is no longer thick with fumes, but blue and grey and clear. They say that the canals in Venice that the harbours of East Lothian are running clear and clean. In the streets of Assisi, people are singing to each other across the empty squares. They are keeping the windows open so that those who are alone may hear the sounds of family around them. Businesses around the world are offering free services to help those whose need is greatest. All over the world, People are offering to walk alongside the homeless, the sick, the weary. All over the world, people are slowing down and reflecting. All over the world, people are looking at their neighbors in a new way. All over the world, people are waking up to a new reality, to how big we really are, to how little control we really have, to what really matters to love. And so we pray and remember, yes, there is isolation, but that does not mean there has to be loneliness. Yes, there is fear, but that does not have to become hate. Yes, there is panic buying, but that does not have to be meanness. Yes, there is sickness, but that does not have to be a sickness of the soul. Yes, there is even death, but there can always be a rebirth of love. In our Gospel reading, we see how life overcomes death, how Jesus heals Lazarus. Martha and Mary and the disciples who traveled with Jesus all knew him, and yet they weren't sure what he could do. And he tells them, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? We see how China and Korea are slowly recovering from the grips of this illness. How life is turning back to normal. But will it be uh, back to normal? Or can we find a new normality in which we see one another? and help each other, just as we are doing just now? Can it be a new normality, where we are not always rushing and running, but taking time to reflect, and think, and stop? Fiona Kendall, who is a mission partner of the Church of Scotland working in Italy, reflects on her experience there over the past few weeks. She writes, that she found an assurance of three things over this time. Firstly, God does not change even when everything else does. Secondly, that strength and encouragement lie in our working together as a community. And thirdly, that a forced stop from the routine or frenzy of our normal lives can be a blessing. In among the fear and the anxiety of the situation in which we find ourselves, there are signs of resurrection. There are signs of life. Do we believe that life is from God and that therefore these signs of life are worth pursuing even when the crisis is over? Stay strong and stay kind and look for the signs of life even in these extraordinary times in which we find ourselves just now. Amen. We now sing again. The next hymn is We Cannot Measure How You Heal. And again, you can find the words for this hymn in a link above the video screen on our website. If you are using a hymn book, it is at number 718. We cannot measure how you heal.
for our prayers we will use a response. When I say, God in your mercy, would you please respond with the words, hear our prayer. So let us pray. Holy One, giver of all good gifts, you offer us an abundance of life and love in our lives, even in times of worry. We too offer gifts to you, offerings of our care and our skills for the good of your world and your people. We pray that you may receive the gifts we offer and that they may contribute to bringing your kingdom to earth today and always. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we thank you for life and for all the people who bring joy to our lives, for all the people who challenge us, for all the people we disagree with, for all the people who love us, for all that brings us new life and helps us to grow, we thank you. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, God, for all who help to bring life into the world and all who work to preserve it, for the wonderful nurses, doctors and carers in the NHS and in health services around the world, working so tirelessly in their care for others, we thank you. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for all the scientists and researchers who are working so hard on finding treatment, a cure, and a vaccination for COVID-19, and we pray that you may guide them in their work. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who contribute to the well-being of our communities just now, all who work in food production and retail, so that we all may have enough to eat, for all who care for their neighbors and make sure that they have what they need for all who preserve the infrastructure needed to support our lives, and for all who are tasked with bringing in regulations and legislation to keep us all as safe and well as possible. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. When we are fearful, God, walk with us. When we are worried, God, offer us your peace. When we are grieving, God, grant us your healing. In this strange time, God, help us to trust in you so that we may find new hope to carry on, love to carry us through, and peace to lighten our hearts. Amen. Before we close our time of worship this morning, may I just thank everybody who has contributed to the service this morning. Liz for the intimations, Paul for the readings, and Tom Riddle, Marion Thompson, David Bradwell, and Alison and Fiona McDougall for the music. Thank you to all of you for joining me this morning for our worship in this different way. Over the coming week, please stay in touch via phone, email, our Facebook pages, or any other way that is safe to connect. Please stay safe and healthy in this week to come as well. We now close our time of worship by singing our final hymn, Lord of the Dance. You can again find the word for this hymn in a link above the video screen on the website, or if you're using a hymn book at number 404, Lord of the Dance. I danced in the morning when the world was begun And I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun And I came down from heaven and I danced on the earth At Bethlehem I had my birth Dance then wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dance, said he And I'll lead you all wherever you may be And I'll lead you all in the dance, said he I danced on the Sabbath and I cured the lame The holy people said 
and it was a shame. They whipped and they stripped and they hung me on high and left me there on a cross to die. Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. I danced on a Friday when the sky turned black. It's hard to dance with the devil on your back. They buried my body and they thought I'd gone, but I am the dance and I still go on. Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. They cut me down and I leapt up high. I am the life that'll never, never die. I'll live in you if you live in me. I am the Lord of the dance, said he. Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. As we leave our time of worship, God goes with us, inspiring and reinvigorating our life. And the blessing of the Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forevermore. Ah. Uh...